the woman. A record 239 women ran for the House for House seats this year, and at least 101 were elected. That's also a record, and that's also a record, and there are some races that haven't even been called yet. Kim Laws out front. <laughs> The cheers we heard for Iowa Democrat Abby Finkenauer Abby, Abby, Abby. began as laughter. Abby. Yeah, there were people who laughed me out of rooms because they thought, okay, she's 28 years old, paying off student loans, you know, comes from a working class family, no money of her own to put into this. No one's laughing anymore at Congresswoman-elect Finkenauer, part of the record wave of women elected to Congress. Americans voted in more than 100 women to the House of Representatives, a red to blue flip powered mostly by Democratic women. It's a political claiming of power that rose out of the populist women's march in response to the Trump presidency. Marching became running for office. First time candidates like Mikey Sherrill campaigned with her powerful personal story as a Navy veteran. Does that open the door? I think it does. If you're a veteran and you've always put this country first, I think that gives people the sense that you'll continue to do so. Cheryl, now the congresswoman-elect from New Jersey's 11th district. When I was a little elementary school kid, we lived here. Alyssa Slotkin, who worked for the State Department, never considered running for office until the House voted to repeal the Affordable Care Act. You can't expect those people um, to reorient and become better leaders. You have to replace them with people who are willing to fight, who are willing to actually, like, give a crap. You may want to get tested. She replaces her congressman, elected to represent Michigan's 8th Congressional District. Tonight we make history. The 116th Congress will not just be more female, but more diverse. New Mexico's Deb Hallett and Sharice Davis of Kansas make history as the first Native American women in Congress and elected as the first Muslim women in Congress, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib. Women voters broke for Democrats by 19 points over Republicans. One of the night's biggest surprises, Kendra Horn's victory in deep red Oklahoma. Representation matters. Oklahoma is 49th in the nation for women serving in elected office, and we need a different voices at the table to enact good policy. Republican women made gains in some offices while losing numbers overall in Congress. Tennessee's Marsha Blackburn moves from the House to the Senate, while South Dakota's Christine Noem shatters the ceiling of her state as the first woman governor. A win and a wave of women she predicted last winter as she farmed on her ranch. You prefer a tractor to an airplane. I do. You have control over your own destiny. Progress. But women still only make up about one in four members of Congress. It's a notable increase, but I don't think it's the tsunami that was talked about throughout the whole campaign. I think we have to do more work to get to that point where we're talking about women who are closer to gender parity in government. Now those numbers could rise because women are still in competitive races that are too close to call tonight. Among them, California's Young Kim, who hopes to be the first Korean American to go to Congress. And here where I'm standing, Arizona's Senate race, still too close to call between Kirsten Cinema and Martha McSally. Kate, whoever wins here will make history as Arizona's first female senator. Kate. An awesome look at it all. Thanks so much, Kim. I really appreciate it. And thank you all so much for joining us on this wild day. AC360 starts now.